That should have been me. That could be us. We got the names, and I swear I fix your leaky sink and let out of her doubts. We'll find us in a sitting for tonight, because you know my favorite band's in this house. Right, that was Favorite Band by Nameless and August, and your favorite host, Brian Crawford, is back in the studio. Oh, and uh, Ian's here as well. <laughs> that was the worst segue. <laughs> Come on. What do you want from me? I... <laughs> I meant from you into me. That was it. Well, he's here. No, no. Uh, we're What's going on? <laughs> happy to have Ian back. This is uh, the first time in a while. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I've been busy. You wouldn't know anything about that. Not at all. <laughs> nope. All I do is lounge around and uh, and drink wine. Well, that sounds like a real, real nice, nice way to spend your uh, spare time. It, I'm so busy. I'm even it's, social mediaing right as, now as we, talk. as we talk. So a terrible uh, hosting job by hey. Ian yep. right now. <laughs> oh, that's right. I had the thing up here. I posted this this post for the bingo so you could read the information, but I just got the information. Uh, minutes before we start, <laughs> it's, uh, we will tell minutes. you the information. It's uh, breaking news. Uh, why don't we get into that to start off? We sure. do have uh, this bingo event coming up. You can see it right here if you're watching live. It is February 17th, 7 to 9 p.m. And uh, there's going to be prizes, raffles, and more. That's going to be at Panza Gallery. So, actually, no, it's going to be at the Millville Studios. So, right here, 220 North Avenue, Millville Studios, bingo, on the 17th, 7 to 9 p.m. So, come check that out. It's a way to really help the music festival as we're raising money to put this thing together. We're bringing sponsors in. We're raising money. So, here is a, a place where you can do your part to help build this awesome event and make sure it is sustainable here in Millville, which is going to be great. We have so many yep. awesome things planned for the festival. Today we're going to talk about hosts, and we're going to have different hosts throughout the different stages at the mm -hmm. festival, and that's going to be a good time. But be sure to come out to Bingo on the 17th. We'll remind you of that throughout Speaking the program. Speaking of hosts, who's uh, hosting that Bingo? You are, actually. Really? Yeah, so... Huh. How about a, that? Yeah, it'll be a good time. I will be there, and uh, oh, you know, got you breathing down my neck, looking over my shoulder, making well, sure I'm not calling out the wrong numbers, fixing the bingo what game. I'm say, well, yeah, that is something to to be concerned with. But also, what I'm saying is, you know, the two of us are there, but you know, I'm a big shot, so you know, I get to relax and and drink wine. Sure. I, hey, and I'm a hustler. Like I say, I, I, yeah. I, I know the meaning of work hard. Uh, I actually have a professional background in bingo. Do you tell oh, yeah. tell us about this? I have a professional background. Been paid to call bingo for and this is what's squeaking. That is the chair. It's the chair. It's the chair. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm insect, a professional sit bingo. Caller. Professional bingo caller. I should know better than to squeak around in my stool here. No, I, I called uh, bingo at Tiki Lounge for okay. nearly a year before they decided to discontinue. Uh, but that was a great time. Where Still, did you do it? Out on the dance floor? or No, right uh, up in the front in, okay, the, bar in the bar area. area. It was nice. Sometimes you'd have good nights, uh, lots of people. Um, you know, they'd get rowdy. It was fun. You know, a little... So like an intense... So it wasn't yeah. like the old grannies in there with their trolls. However, that could be very rowdy. I could oh, see yeah. like some drunk granny like whipping a troll at, at someone because she's mad. Yeah, and she doesn't even have to have grandkids. I mean, True. she can just be, can just be... an octogenarian mm -hmm. of some renown. I've called bingo for um, uh, the more traditional bingo demographic as well. Okay. So there you go. So we have a professional professional bingo guy who's going to be hosting the bingo night on the 17th. Who's going to be hosting. Have, have people ever, like, gone insane? Have people ever gone to blows over bingo? In your time as a host, in my, in my day, have you ever seen yeah. like the granny like take off the pearls and whip it around and be like, "You son of a bitch!" Not n never got physical, but people get angry about bingo. What what, what are some of the things that they get angry about? Like like, give me a story. Um, if you misread a number, uh, or, you know, like sometimes I was using more worn down sets, okay, so something might not look right, uh, or, um, 
you know, something like that. Whatever. M mild learning disability, I'm sure. Whatever it is I'm in possession of. Uh, sometimes I don't read things perfectly, but that's the big one, is me screwing up. Um, and also when someone else gets a bingo, if two people call bingo at once, you have to learn how to diffuse that situation <laughs> quickly. Do you do it to like, like do, you, do the people raise their hand and it's the first one to raise hey, their you hand? you shout bingo. Or? Keep that in mind for the 17th. You have to shout bingo. You have to shout bingo. What if people uh, do shout it at the same time? Then you either split the prize or you do a tiebreaker round. Depends how cutthroat people want to play. Do you own a troll? I am a troll. Oh, there uh, we go. So he, he does. Uh, so you've been a host at music festivals before. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are some of the things that you've experienced with that? What are uh, some of the things that you hope to to have learned from your past experiences that you wish to bring to the Millville Music Festival? I think the first thing I've learned is that not every one of your questions deserves a smart-ass response. <laughs> so, but moving uh, – each, each festival runs a little differently depending on how large they are, uh, where they're based out of. They're very mm. fun. Um, you know, the first first and foremost lesson is to plan for a really, really long day. Um, I've never gone off the rails at a festival, but uh, if you, you know, it's it's hard work. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it really is hard work. Um, but it's a nice little prestige thing. It was fun last year. I got to, I got to host all the major music festivals. You know, obviously, not all of them this year because. Didn't count. None of them counted because none of them were the uh, exactly. Mobile music festival. Exactly. This is this is the cream of the crop. Yeah. Here, this is this is going to be the festival that changes festivals. Festivals nationwide. Citywide, nationwide. <laughs> worldwide. I'm getting ambitious. Yeah. There you go. Universe wide. Each one does it differently. Deutschland was fun. I got to host at Wiggle uh, last year for, and they were incredibly um, hospitable. Uh, and then, uh, what was there last year? Strip District, uh, Deutschtown. Rant. What's what's the one I'm forgetting? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. You said Strip District, Deutschtown, Rant. Uh, there is Layer Cake. Layer Cake. Okay. That's right. And I did that at Funhouse, of course. Nice. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun because uh, they need we uh, anyway. They were all fun. They were all very different. You know, some of them spread spread out a little more. Uh, you know, and it's it's a lot of fun working with the venues. Some of them are like really gracious mm -hmm. and really easy to work with. Or some of them not. Well, some are more than others. Some, okay. the owners are really involved is probably a better way to say it. The owners are really involved in what they're doing uh, and what's going on throughout the day. And you can tell that they're really happy to have the festival festival at their venue. Uh, some other places, you know, they just sort of set it up as a, a promotional tool and to be involved in the community. And they turn the reins over to their, you know, day shift managers staff, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little bit of disconnect. But it's it's hard. I mean, people – I was talking to Jeremy – K word about this, and you know we we did play his song exactly as well on our way, and we also had a uh, Birds Over Arkansas. That was the second song very that you heard if you stuff. were yeah, if you were listening from the very beginning. Which you should. If you're should listening have been. to this on demand, then uh, you'll just have to listen to the Rivers Edge Radio Network and wait for it to cycle through. Exactly, and that, that could or, be or buy hours. a ticket and <laughs> see them live. Absolutely, with but he was talking about how hosting gigs in general wasn't such a big thing, and it was something that. I got really involved with and sort of awkwardly shoehorned my way into, you know, hosting shows and like, hey, maybe you need a host. And you build up those credentials and mm -hmm. now I can go to someone and say, well, I've hosted all this. I've done this. And, that. and uh, it's pretty cool. But I think it's really important to have a host for any show you're doing, whether it is comedy, variety, just music. It's important to have a host to keep things moving along um, because a really good host will double as a stage manager. Even if you have a stage manager, it's nice to have that backup. But it's also someone who can balance uh, on stage personality, persona kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, as well as that behind the scenes, someone who's sort of like wearing two hats all day. It's exhausting. How do you find someone like that? Because I imagine you can get a lot of people who have no background at all with stage management. They might be uh, an entertaining personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you find somebody who how, – how do you vet the person to be a host? Because I also imagine – it would be easy to find some sort of drunkard, for example, who's mm -hmm. spending their time at the bar, and by the end of the festival, their you know, arms are flail flailing, and the it's words happened. are slurry, and they, they don't know what they're talking about. That I've kind seen of thing. it happen. Yeah, so how do you avoid that? I, you know, I don't hire a lot of hosts myself. Mm -hmm. um, or but we'll have a ton for this event, exactly. obviously. Exactly. 
Um, every year when I do the New Year's Eve, Eve, I'll bring a friend on who's never hosted anything before, which to me is very uh, sort of a fun experiment to see what someone with no experience can do. Mm -hmm. But you normally get someone who's one or the other, who's a lot of personality and doesn't pay any attention to the technical and practical aspects, or you have someone who's very focused on that and doesn't have any presence. You definitely need a balance of both. I would say long run, you can probably prep and train someone to say, here's what you need to do throughout the day. And you just got to make sure they're not so far to that one performative end of the spectrum that they're just going to ignore that on the day of uh, and be that person getting drunk. So long, long run, you probably are looking for people who are more stage personalities and that kind of thing. Um, and it's nice to find people who um, aren't normally stage personalities because then they're not so focused about it being all about, about them. them. Yeah. Like we've done, I've done a lot of stuff where you've had comics. And I, I, when I first started, this is one of the mistakes I made. One of the lessons I learned is I thought, okay, well, I'm a comic and they, you know, people will tell you, well, you're a comedian or you're, a, you know, whatever. Do, do some time in between. No one wants to hear that. People are there to hear the music at a festival and they want that downtime to either go to another venue or to be able to have some discussion and some downtime. Because, like, live music is a lot of sensory input. You're watching, you're listening, it's loud, you know, so you need that downtime. So you just need a host who can get, ma just stay on top of stuff, be sure they're managing the bands, like, okay, you need to get off, you need to be on, you need to do this by then. Make sure that, you know, you're doing crisp introductions, mentioning everything the band has coming up, make sure that they're happy with their introduction and also whatever the venue needs, whatever announcements the venue needs. So yeah, I mean, you it, did mention yeah. that there, it's nice whenever the host can double as a stage manager mm -hmm. and, and work through some things. Uh, Mike Bergens of as ladders just said that you did a great job during the Deutschtown music That's festival so at a situation that occurred at wiggle. Can you tell us about what happened at wiggle whiskey? Yeah. Um, wiggle, they, they got a really late start. Uh, mm -hmm. so we had to push, some bands back and uh, move that around. If I'm not mistaken, Asleiders was second or third in the lineup. They were very early on, and there was an out of town, a DC band, I think, who opened. Um, but you know, in a case like that, it's out of everyone's control, and you can't like freak out. And you gotta, you gotta be ready for people to maybe get a little stressed about that and be able to handle it. You just gotta communicate in that, and you, you know, you ask, you know, can you shorten your set? Is there anything you can backline? Is there any way that you can Streamline the event. Uh, it really is being a master of ceremonies. Like, it's the most MC thing you can do. Uh, very cool. You know, with with respects to uh, MC Ren, MC Hammer. <laughs> um, but it's, it's definitely, you know, as long as you just stay cool, stay calm, stay in control, both of the surroundings and of yourself. I know with Layer Cake, um, we even did some work leading up to the festival where you, we were the point person for bands to email, uh, you know, because Layer Cake had a lot of out-of-town acts. Uh, that was one of their, their points, or at least the stage I worked did. And so people were coming a couple weeks in advance with emails, you know, and you just have to know how to answer questions. You have to be prepared for uh, the unexpected. And, you know, just, just communicate. Make sure the crowd knows what's going on, the venue, the artist, and you're just doing circles, doing laughs all day. <laughs> So, uh, do you have anybody in mind as far as a host goes for this event? I know you do have like a list of people. Oh God, <laughs> festival's done. I in fact, we're just uh, we're just gonna end it <laughs> right it. right here. Well, sure. I haven't really reached out to anyone. The thing with um, stage managing is it's definitely one of the last things you put in place because yeah. you get your venues, you get your timing, your details, all that that you just provide to someone, and it's really easy just to bring someone on board. You know, you draft out your little uh, form letter. Hey, we'd like you to do this. This is what you're going to be expected to do. You interested? Uh, definitely a lot of River's Edge talent. I would love for them to be involved. A lot of the people we know and love, Mike Sass and Tom Henry. This is the first time, if they're listening, this is the first time they're hearing about it. <laughs> <My dear. laughs> yes, um, but, but we're going we're gonna to volunteer them. Yeah, so. Matt Wolfarth, uh, you know, Jay Cooper, Howie Mack, all, all the great uh, personalities from the River's yeah. Edge. I, I Honestly... I know that Millvale Music Festival is different from – it's a different entity completely than the River's Edge. Yes. But it would be really easy just to stack it with all the talent mm -hmm. from the station and just bring them on stage because I think that they could do a great job because when you're running your own podcast, you're, you're doing that. You're spinning plates. You're doing a million things at once. 
But just local talent, like I said, it's also fun to bring people on who have adjacent stage talent mm -hmm. and who uh, who are lively people. Uh, but not well, I think that's a big important yeah. thing. You have to have a lot of energy to be a yeah. host, right? You can't be somebody who you can't be one of those like like for example, if you're a comic who has kind of like a like a, a style that maybe isn't energetic that might not make you the best host for an event like sure. this, correct? Or if you're somebody who's kind of like a Debbie Downer, that's not going to I don't translate. know what you're talking about. Are you, is that like, is that a backhanded remark? It is. Yeah. <laughs> Are you coming well, at that's me? That's all we do is insult here. <laughs> so. That sounds good. But, you know, there's um actually on the site, uh, uh, millvillemusicfestival.com, actually if you go to the talent submission page, you can uh, – there, there's a, a little checkbox for uh, comedian. I think it's comedian, and then there's – Millvillemusic.org. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Millvillemusic.org. The so, .com was already taken. The dot, well, no, we're just – you know we're, we're too important for a .com. So if you're looking here at the page, as Ian said, right here at the top. I guess I should be bringing it up on my phone. So I have I it highlighted. If you're watching, properly. if you're not listening, it's at the top of the page at millvillemusic.org. You just click that. And the registration is there. If you want more information on that, you'll have to go back to episode one of the Millville Music Minute and uh, watch as we jump into all of that. But yes, that's where if you are interested in being a host, that's where you can apply as well. So uh, what's the, the worst situation that you had to deal with as a host when everything went wrong? It was a disaster. Nothing went your way. Tell me about that. Well, I think um – it probably wasn't at a festival. Those are generally run really well. Everyone who puts festivals on in this city, I do have to give them credit. You know, they're very communicative. Uh, I, and, you know, like I said, um, you know, you know all the information going in. You have your schedule. You have all that. And it's a big deal. M music festivals in this city are, are a pretty big deal, regardless of what stage you're on. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes there's a hierarchy of stage. Like, Deutschtown has their clearly marked, like, main stage. And so you have the Pittsburgh elite bands playing there, and then up-and-comers are playing on other stages. But everyone's happy to have that time, and everyone knows that they'll get exposure. Um, so it's it's never really – there's never really been like a a disaster at a festival. Well, tell me but, another disaster because I want to hear a disaster story. I tell me one. something that like really went wrong. People were going crazy. Things are lighting on fire. That's, Tell me something like that. That's not when, happened. I'm, not when I'm managing. Well, not, not, when... not when you're even hosting, <laughs> but even something you've observed. What's the worst thing? Actually, Strip District Music Festival okay. last year. There we go. About a year ago, right? They had yeah, the, uh, Honestly, saying ago. everything that's everything worked fine, that, that's, that's boring. We're trying to entertain people here as well as provide information. I was hosting the, the comedy stage. Okay. Um, and, and it was a disaster. It was because the way – it was at Maggie's <laughs> Farm, which I love. I uh -huh. love the rum bar. Oh, what a great place. I really, really love them yes. there. And, um, you know, it was an epic cast stage. Sykes was there. He opened up the show with a live podcast. At it, and it started real slow, and then people started trickling in, and then it hit like 9 or 10. And it was just packed with people. And it's a real narrow bar, and if you've ever been in a narrow place like that, it really does not work, especially for – comedy or any kind of spoken performance well music, it can work for music yeah you yeah. play over it in music uh with music sometimes uh but they they made this the comedy stage and and it was packed and no one was listening um and there was just no way i mean you had some of the best and best known comics in the city on this stage yeah and, I, I remember going to it and yeah. Yeah, I did uh, struggle to, to listen to everybody. But Even I just if you wanted was, to, you couldn't yeah. hear over mm -hmm. the din. It was people who were not there for the festival, they who were, were just there, there for Maggie's Farm. Yeah. Which is fine. Awesome. It's, uh, you know, it was great. It just wasn't the right fit. Uh, and I also remember three comics ended up dropping out. Oh, wow. Fairly late into the, But we had enough comics coming by to support each other that I said, can you do five? Can you do ten? You know, and we plugged them in where we could just to keep the show moving. In the end, I mean, I sat and listened to the sets, and they, I mean, I, I liked them, and I feel like the show went well. It just wasn't, no one listened. Yeah. So. It, it was a tough room for comedy. You have to really find the right type of place to, to put on a, a comedy stage, I think. The biggest disaster I've ever encountered with anything like a festival or a longer show is just lack of attendance. And there's nothing you can do about it except maintain the energy, even if it's for one person, even if it's just for the bartender. You know, so it's, uh, you know, it's sometimes 
when you're with a festival, it's cool because they already have their own thing going on. Mm-hmm. But it, it's when I've done planned and hosted my own shows that these, you know, out of left field, completely unforeseen wrenches get thrown in. And it's just <laughs> those are the real fires and disasters. Cool. Well, I could tell you about one disaster story that happened oh, where do. I please do. Yeah, I almost lost my life actually at a at a big event. So <laughs> I have a lot of background in planning events. I actually not to not to pat myself on the back here, but I am on the Wall of Fame for the American Cancer Society out in Washington County. But uh, that's because I, I created the Cal U Relay for Life, and we can. Talk more about that maybe later in some of my event planning. But as far as a disaster story goes, we every event I plan. So uh, maybe I shouldn't say this; no one will Go come. For it. But every every <laughs> event I plan has some sort of crazy weather, but never bad enough that it's not a good event to go to. But often events that I plan are met with wind storms, and for yeah. the first year at, at the Cal U Relay for Life, we had all of these tents and the relay for life that I was that I grew up in and I say that because I had been there for years and years and it was a, a staple in my community it was the Norwin relay for life and they provide tents for all of their vendors mm. and I thought well you know that's what I knew to do so I thought we'll do this for the the Cal U relay for, for life so we brought in all of these tents and Norwin actually they, very nice of them the Norwin relay for life allowed us to borrow all of their tents for our first year's Relay for Life, which was really nice of them. So we go to set them all up, and I find out that none of these tents have tent stakes because Norwin's Relay for Life is on AstroTurf. You're not allowed to put a stake through the ground. Oh. So then this windstorm picks up, and tents are flying across this baseball field. And we actually had a big garage tent, and I don't know if you've ever seen one of those. It's like a carport tent. But yeah. the, the poles are metal, and they're about this. They're, they're like, I don't know, like four inches diameter, I believe, that, something like that. Or way bigger than four inches. Uh, however long this is. What is this, like six inches? No, whatever. that's about four. four. Okay, so know. about whatever. It, it's big. It's this big freaking huge pipe. How many millimeters? I don't know. So there's – I don't know how many – how big this thing was. There were probably like six poles or, or whatever, and it was massive. You could fit a truck underneath this this tent. Okay. So I'm standing there, and, and this did have stakes because we got this from a different event or a different person. Well, the wind was so, so like, heavy and so forceful. It actually picked the entire tent up through the stakes. The tent went sideways, and it flung at me, and I'm literally diving out of the way, <laughs> trying to just hang on for, for dear life as this giant garage tent with these massive poles comes flying at me. I and, just imagine um, it like out of the Matrix, like in. I mean, it literally time. was. I literally like, like, what, like, jumped sideways and tried to spin out of the way, and somehow I managed to avoid death to bring you, <laughs> uh, to help bring you the Millville Music Festival. But to single-handedly bring you the Millville Music Festival. <laughs> no, but and honestly, we have an unbelievable committee. So that's a sure. quick shout out to them. We've been meeting every about every other week since mm-hmm. what was it like the end of summer or something like june that? or july yeah. it was definitely not june at least july or early august somewhere in in there something like that but yeah no but i, I mean we have so many cool things that are in the works that i really want to update everyone on but i don't want to necessarily spill the beans until we have confirmation right. and everything is kind of ironed out but uh stay tuned we have some really awesome travel options and opportunities for you to take advantage of if you're coming into Millvale and you need to park and find a, a place to uh, you need to get around I mean parking's limited here so we have come up with solutions for that and uh, ways to get around which are innovative and no one else is doing it in the festival community and uh, that came about through some ideas at the the planning meeting I believe uh, it was Paul Basung who came up with that idea and I reached out to a friend of mine to, to get in motion but basically you'll be able to navigate this festival uh very smoothly and uh paper free if you would like so we'll get into that though a little bit later when we have everything ironed out mm-hmm. so don't forget bingo i want to keep pressing this bingo that's going to be february 17th 7 to 9 p.m and is that what's admission for that uh, admission for that, let's see if it says $1 a card. 
dollar card. So free admission, pay as many cards as you like. The more you buy, the more you win. And I, I yeah, the more wanna, you buy, the more you the more chances. Put that, well, also the more money that you put towards the festival. Towards the to festival, help make this. And if you out, buy, yeah. if you buy what one thousand bingo cards, then you could be a title part. <laughs> That's right. See, there you go. <laughs> and I do want to just mention we talked so much about stage hosting. If anyone's listening to this and you're not daunted by these tales of terror, by all means, you can reach out to the Millville Music Festival. You can re, uh, fill out uh, the millvillemusic.org web form uh, if you would like to consider uh, hosting a stage. It's an awesome networking opportunity with venues and other artists. Great way to grow your own individual brand. You can also reach out to your boy individually if you think he'd be a good fit for the face of the festival. You can find me uh, at Ian Insect Everywhere. There you go. And I'm showing them the form right now if you're Perfect. watching on the video. But uh, I guess that is that should do it. Yeah. For this week, anything else? Uh, I know. Where, where will, we, will you be in the coming week? <laughs> Everywhere. Well, oh, that's right. You have uh, the reason the why you show. haven't been here. Yeah. yeah, you've got the big show that's going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Our we have a uh, little shop of Rocky Horror, which we talked about on your show on River's Edge last Friday. Uh, we have. Two shows, an 8 p.m. and a 12 p.m. The 8 is sold out. The 12 midnight is not 12 p.m., rather 12 a.m. Uh, midnight show still has a few tickets left. I think maybe 10 or so. Um, and uh, again, if you're interested, you can hit me up in person, get some advanced sales. You can try and buy at the door, try your luck on that. But I think this last day is probably going to knock out all the tickets so that's incredibly exciting that is awesome so much talent congratulations. involved in that show. Congra uh, congratulations as well because that, that's a big i mean it's, it's a decent sized room to, to fill up on Thank friday you. night so yeah I'm we're excited. we're all very excited for it we know brian will be there i will be there being yes. a big shot lounging vip tickets <laughs> i'm sure well yeah i yeah. feel like they need to build like a separate box in that room just for you just, just yeah, for so you when i go in <laughs> That's actually one of the things that I miss about Smalls, and I've talked to Mike Speranzo about this. Uh, as much as I like a lot of the renovations that they have done, mm -hmm. I used to have like a private balcony when I would go there because nobody would travel up mm -hmm. the steps to the old balcony right. except for me. So it was always me and like a random camera guy who was shooting video from an iPad. <laughs> and uh, that is where yeah, I, I agree. You should have your own here. box. You should be kept isolated. Kept away from everyone else. I totally agree. We're on the same page there. Good. As long as we agree. <laughs> uh, this, what is it? Uh, the 16th. What is that? A Thursday? Thursday. Yeah, Thursday the 16th. I will be hosting a discussion panel at Work Hard Pittsburgh in Allentown of musicians and uh, musicians and social media. So Ian will be here alone hosting the show. So we are going to uh, hand things over to him and hopefully disasters yeah hopefully we don't have a no if he if he managed to get through uh wiggle whiskey then hopefully he can <laughs> get through the millville music minute now he'll be great he used to have his own podcast and what i don't, know, I don't even remember something that. happened to that i don't, I don't know. know who knows so i'm brian crawford it's your boy and uh you were we're closing out with old wounds and old scars and that is from our friend dan getkin in 12.6 so don't forget, next Thursday, same spot here at Millville Music on Facebook for the Millville Music Minute. Thank you.